this is EC201 lecture 49. Yesterday we were trying to look at the input impedance of a voltage controlled voltage source where we were trying to realize a voltage gain of K, alright, and this would happen for an ideal op amp. And we were trying to look at what happens to the input impedance of the amplifier if the op amp had a finite gain A and a finite input resistance Rn. We realized that the current being drawn from the input which is I sub in is basically V out divided by A divided by R in which means that V in by I in which is the input impedance Z sub in is nothing but V out times A times R in and we know that V out by V in is approximately K and how do we get this? We made a whole bunch of you know approximations and neglected one with respect to A and all this other stuff and which means V in by I in is simply A by K times Rn. And this makes physical sense because if this node moves up, the difference between the two input terminals of the op amp is very very small which means that this potential also moves up almost by the same amount which means that the current flowing through Rn is extremely small so that intuitively explains why the input impedance is enhanced with respect to the open loop case. Okay, When you had the open loop case the input impedance would just simply be Rn right, without the feedback but now it is enhanced by this factor A by K which is the loop gain and as I said yesterday this is a, this is arrived at you know uh, by making a whole bunch of approximations it turns out that if you do a rigorous analysis that the input impedance is actually enhanced by not the loop gain but one plus loop gain okay and since we assume that the loop gain is much much larger than one that's how we end up with loop gain times the input resistance without feedback okay the basic idea in this discussion is to just give you intuition as to the mechanism by which feedback enhances the input impedance of a voltage controlled voltage source. Okay. So, something that comes out quite logically is the following. So, the output impedance with feedback as we saw yesterday all this pertains to a voltage controlled voltage source in the closed loop. The output with feedback is the output impedance without feedback divided by the loop gain all right and the input impedance is nothing but the input impedance without feedback multiplied by the loop gain so you can see that negative feedback is basically trying to take an amplifier and uh, once it's uh, put inside a loop the closed loop will tend to become an ideal voltage controlled voltage source when the loop gain tends to infinite. Now we are also aware of practical op amps where the gain first of all the DC gain itself is not infinite it is finite but we know that it can be of the order of several several tens of thousands even close to a hundred thousand without any problem. However, what can we say about the frequency dependence of the gain? 
So in a practical op amp, how does the gain vary with frequency? We know that the gain is not fixed with frequency. It keeps decreasing. And how does it decrease? This is of the form A0 divided by 1 plus S by omega D, which can be approximated by How can you approximate this? Any suggestions? A0 is very, very large. So, if I plot on a log log curve omega, uh, uh, omega on the x axis and mod A on the y axis, I mean for small values omega, uh, where omega is smaller than omega d, you basically get A. After that, it falls off with a slope of, so this is log A, this is log omega, and this is log omega D. And then this falls off with a slope of 1. Correct? So, if omega D is very, very small, and A0 is very, very large, if I kept A0 times omega D constant, it basically, sorry, Okay, so for frequencies greater than omega d, you can simply approximate this by a straight line which where the a actually tends to infinity, which is equivalent to saying that this is 1 over a naught plus s by a naught omega d, which is, and what is a naught omega d? There is no approximation here. A0 omega d is nothing but the gain bandwidth product for the op amp. Correct? So, you can approximate this by GB by S. Does that make sense? At any frequency beyond the dominant pole omega d, you can quite safely approximate the response, the frequency response of the open loop gain of an operational amplifier by this simplified expression, which is simply gain bandwidth product divided by S. Alright? And we know that the loop gain is of the form when you put this op amp in a closed loop, the loop gain is of the form some A of S times F, the loop gain as a function of frequency is GB by S times F. Please do not confuse F with frequency, F is the feedback factor. What comment can you make about the loop gain as a function of frequency? As frequency increases, loop gain decreases. So, this decreases with frequency. Alright? And what do we know about the output impedance? Please recall that As we have seen, the Z out with feedback is the Z out without feedback divided by the loop gain. The loop gain decreases with frequency. So, which means that the closed loop output impedance, what happens? Loop gain is proportional to 1 over S, which means that the output impedance with feedback increases with frequency. Does that make sense? So, in other words, if you had a practical op amp, that is a dominant pole compensated op amp, and by now you know why the op amp has to be dominant pole compensated, 
And if you measure this output impedance Z out as a function of frequency, then the discussion we had just now says that the output impedance increases with frequency. What kind of impedance increases with frequency? And inductance. Z out looks inductive. It turns out that you can show that whenever you are trying to realize a feedback based voltage source, whether it is a current controlled voltage source or a voltage controlled voltage source, feedback will basically try and make the output impedance low by taking the output impedance of the system without feedback and dividing it by the loop gain. Since any physical amplifier will always have the magnitude which goes down with frequency, you will see that the loop gain function will always reduce with frequency, which means that any feedback based voltage source, whether it is a voltage controlled voltage source or a current controlled voltage source will have an inductive output impedance. Any feedback based voltage source will have an inductive output impedance. Okay. This is a very important thing, it is a fairly straightforward thing, but important thing to know. So, can you tell me intuitively why the looking in impedance is inductive? Why is the output impedance looking in lo very, very low at low frequency? I mean, what is output impedance? We basically try and uh, see what happens to the output voltage when I pump a current into the into the output. At very low frequencies, the moment I try and push a current Ix into the output of the op amp, we saw yesterday that this no, this voltage will tend to rise, but a rising voltage here will basically cause this also to rise and since the op amp has got a very high gain at DC, even a tiny rise here will cause the op amp to pull this voltage down dramatically causing all this current to actually flow into the op amp, okay, thereby keeping this node potential still at 0. Okay. That is how you get low output impedance at very low frequencies. This is what we discussed yesterday. Is this clear? Instead of Ix being DC, if this was a sinusoid at some very high frequency, what happens? Even when you, if this is a sinusoidal current, as you point out, this node potential will tend to rise and this node potential will be this node potential divided by k. However, the gain of the op amp is not as high as it, it is at DC for high frequencies. So, it is not able to pull this voltage down by as large an extent as it would if it was an, if Ix was a DC signal. That basically means that while it is true that uh, as long as the loop gain larger than 1, it, the output voltage will certainly be smaller than what it would be open loop. However, it is not quite as effective as it is at DC where the gain of the op amp is extremely large. Alright? And that is what all this math is telling you also. So, the output impedance with feedback is the output impedance without feedback divided by the loop gain. The loop gain goes down with frequency which means that the output impedance with feedback increases with frequency and if the op amp has, is a single pole model, then the output impedance will look inductive. What happens to the input impedance now? By the same argument, what happens? The input impedance is certainly very, very, very large at DC, but the closed loop impedance as we saw is the open loop impedance multiplied by the loop gain. The loop gain falls off with frequency. So, 
the input impedance of this voltage controlled source will decrease with frequency and the same argument holds for all voltage controlled sources. So, any any the feedback based voltage so similarly any feedback based voltage controlled source whether it is a voltage controlled voltage source or a voltage controlled current source will have an impedance which goes down with frequency. So, what is it? What, what impedance is that? will have a capacitive Zn. Does it make sense? Based on this experience with voltage control voltage sources, if I now had a current control current source, the output impedance with feedback would be? How can you compare the output impedance of a current control current source with feedback versus the one without feedback? You know that feedback basically tries to make the current control current source as ideal as possible. So, if there is a feedback based current control current source, then you can expect the output impedance with feedback to be the output impedance without feedback multiplied by a large number which happens to be the loop gain. Alright? And I mean the loop gain falls off with frequency which means that the output impedance of a current controlled current source as a function of frequency looks like a capacitor because the impedance falls off with frequency. What can you say about a, the input impedance of a current controlled current source as a function of frequency? Ideally it must be 0 which is the raw input impedance of the, uh, the basic source without feedback divided by the loop gain. As frequency goes on increasing the loop gain falls off which means that the input impedance must increase with frequency which is equivalent to saying that the input impedance of a current controlled current source will the input impedance is basically the impedance without feedback divided by the loop gain. The loop gain is going off as some 1 over s alright which means that the input impedance goes up with frequency as s which means that the input impedance looks inductive. It turns out that this is a valuable practical application. You have gone to the lab and you have used you know those power supplies where you can turn the knob and you know get whatever voltage you want right. So, those big boxes with uh, you know there is a meter and then there is a knob and if you want to get 10 volts you know you turn the knob and so on. So, it turns out that the way that works equivalently is the following. So, this is so, I will say this is a what is called a voltage regulator. All right. So, the op amp there is a big op amp inside that box, all right, which uh, runs off some VCC and some VEE all right and and there is a fixed reference voltage VREF applied to the op amp to the positive terminal of the op amp and let me call this draw this. So, both VCC and VEE come from the from a rectifier they take the 220 volts and generate. So, these are basically unregulated DC. In other words, this can change depending on the time of the day, the absolute voltage on the line and so on. So, because all these are dependent on the, the mains. 
VCC and VE are derived from the mains by some rectification. But when you want 15 volts for your circuit, you want 15 volts. You don't want something which depends on what your neighbor is doing in his room. That's the function of this block here, which is a, you know, which is called a voltage regulator. It is nothing great. You can see that it is what you have done already, which is what, if this op amp is infinite gain, what is this potential? That has to be V, right? So, this must be K times V, right? And if you want to adjust the output voltage like you do with the knob, where do you think you put the knob? Yeah, so, this is the knob that you turn, alright? And there is a fine knob and there is a coarse knob. So, what do you think? How do you think I would do that? You put two parts here, right? One is a part which varies a little bit. Oh, it's got a very limited range. In series width, a part with a large range. So, you get both fine and coarse control. And this goes to your board. This op amp has to be a really strong op amp in the sense that you should be able to support, supply a very, very large current. There will be a current rating on the, on the op amp. Okay? And not only that, you know that sometimes it's possible to short the power supply and ground inadvertently. There will be auxiliary circuitry which will sense how much current is being supplied and if that exceeds the limit which you set again with that meter, it basically shuts the op amp off to prevent any damage to the devices inside the op amp. That's called short circuit protection. That may not concern us at the, at the moment. The only thing that I wish to point out is that clearly, however super duper this op amp is, its gain must fall off with, with frequency. That what would the input impedance look like? It looks like an inductor. Let's say you were trying to build a common emitter amplifier. I don't know, maybe you wanted a lot of gain. You biased it up all like so, like smart kids who have taken EC201, you bias this, you wanted a large gain common emitter amplifier. So, what you do is, say did this, this has to be connected to to VCC. So, what will you do? You will take this and connect it there. This is the VCC of the circuit. So far, what have we seen? What is VCC? For the DC voltage source for, so for incremental signals, what is it? It is ground. That is what we are all used to. Now, suddenly what is VCC? Equivalently, you do not have This is the so called VCC terminal of the of the circuit that you are building. This is coming because of the this is K times V rec and this is coming from the regulator. And it turns out that if you want to be able to drive a lot of current you know that this is a general purpose thing. So, the op amp should be able to supply a lot of current and if a lot of current has to be supplied, that basically means that the devices that are supplying this current will get heated up, which means that the devices can't be very small, they have to be big. And if things are big, they are, what, is, what can you say about speed? When things are big, things are slow, alright, which means that what can you say about the, the dominant pole of this op amp? The dominant pole must be much smaller than what you would normally be used in this normal op amp based circuits. The currents you are drawing are only maximum of few milliamps or so. Whereas here this op amp has to be able to supply possibly several amps of current, which means that the devices that go into this op amp have to be big, have to be big which means that the poles associated with those devices will be much lower in frequency, which means that to compensate it properly, the 
the dominant pole of the op amp has to be made much lower than what would normally be expected of an op amp. In other words, this op amp is very slow, which means what comment can you make about this inductance? It is large. Why? So, in other words, if the gain bandwidth product of this op amp is, is, is very small, then, I mean, the output impedance of the form is some R out without feedback divided by the loop gain. The loop gain is some GB by S. So, the output impedances of the form R naught divided by GB times S. So, the equivalent inductance is R naught divided by GB. So, if GB is small, the inductance is large. Ideally, if you pump a current or draw a current out of this node, negative feedback should force this to quickly return to its original value. But that is not happening because the op amp is slow. Alright? So, this will be a large enough. Are you people clear about why this, this comes about? So, what happens to the incremental equivalent circuit? Can you help me draw the incremental equivalent circuit now? Let us assume beta is infinite just to make things simpler. So, this is the incremental equivalent circuit. Does it make sense? This is the inductance due to the regulator L reg, alright? And this is the standard incremental equivalent circuit of the this comes because of the bias, this because this also comes because of the bias. This is V in and this is V out. Alright? If this guy wasn't there, it's very straightforward. You simply multiply the gain of this with, uh, if this was incrementally grounded, then you multiply the gain of this amplifier with the gain of this amplifier. It's quite straightforward. Now, what do you think happens? You can do the math later on, but physically, what do you think happens? If I yank this up, if I put a small step here, there will be a large negative step here, and there will be an even larger positive step. They will tend to be an even larger positive step at the output node, right? The moment this attempts to go up, that basically means that current must be flowing, incremental current must be flowing in this direction. And since this current is much larger than, since this current is much larger than this current, we can neglect or we can assume that all the current going into the inductor is virtually that coming from the second transistor, alright? Which means that the, this incremental current will attempt to go in into the inductor, but the inductor is carrying zero current to begin with. So, to change its current, instantaneously is not possible, which means that if you try and push a large current into L sub reg, this mode potential will go up by a large amount. Alright? And if that goes up, what happens? If this mode potential goes up, what do you think will happen to this potential? It will also go up. And if this goes up, what happens to, uh, so do you see what happens? So this goes up. If this goes up, this goes up. If this goes up, this will attempt to go down by a much larger amount. What is this? It is feedback. Alright? You understand? So, what was supposed to be a circuit without feedback, now, because of the finite output impedance of the power supply, spurious feedback is introduced within the circuit without your knowledge. And that is happening because the finite inductance of the power supply. Do you understand? And you know that if you have a high gain amplifier and feedback, what can happen? If you have a high gain amplifier in open loop, you have no problem. The moment there is some spurious feedback path which you don't know what it is, there is the very likely chance of Let's say you are building an, op, you know, an amplifier with a gain of say 1000 by cascading 3 amplifiers each of gain 10. So, if there was some spurious feedback 
you know, a path from the output to the input, for example, through the power supply like this, you can see that unknown to you, there is a, there is a feedback factor. Even if that feedback factor was 1 by 100, you would still be screwed because the gain is 1000, the feedback factor is 1 over 100, so the loop gain is 10 and there are 3 poles, so the amplifier can simply oscillate and you will be looking at it completely mystified because you have not applied any feedback, so the amplifier is oscillating. So through the power supply, feedback path exists and I mean that's a sure shot way of instability when you have high gain amplifier. Does this make sense? Okay, so what can you do to fix it? Think of what the problem was, things are getting screwed up, then you'll be able to figure out a solution, right? So what was the problem? The problem is that when this pumps in a large current or when a large current is being pumped into this supply node, the supply voltage which is supposed to be a constant is not able to accept this large input of current and the voltage goes up. And once the voltage goes up, it feeds back into other points and that's the problem. You can fix the problem if you prevent, prevent the supply voltage node in your circuit from moving. So can you suggest what I can do? Put a big capacitor here. So now what happens when a large current is being pumped into the power supply? Sure enough, the inductor current cannot change. What happens to all this current? This current all flows into the capacitor and if it's a large capacitor, what happens? If you have a huge capacitor and you pump in a current into a huge capacitor, what can you, can you make any comment about the change in the voltage? In principle, if you have an infinite capacitor, there will be no change. If you have a finite capacitor, there will be some change. If you have a large capacitor, there will be a small change. Once you put this large capacitor often called the supply bypass capacitor. Then you will see that the power supply voltage will indeed behave like a incremental ground in spite of having this large inductance which comes from the power supply, okay, from the regulated source. The only limit on CB is how large a capa physical capacitor you can put. This is called supply bypassing and if anybody of you is like an electronics tinkerer or something and if you opened up a PC board, you will see that, you will see a board with many ICs but you will see a whole bunch of these capacitors, those blue things which uh, you know, uh, which have got a positive terminal and a negative terminal, those are electrolytic capacitors. And then you will find a whole bunch of small capacitors, they are either ceramic or tantalum or one of these things. I don't want to go into the details of why you want to put a big capacitor uh, and small capacitors. But the job of these capacitors is to prevent spurious feedback. Without these, your circuits will not work. 